Hi everyone, I'm Robert DeLorenis, Peace Pilot, and I wanted to share some things we've learned on the Polar Expedition since we began November 16th, 2019. When we started the trip, our intention was to connect the South Pole and the North Pole, the two places on the planet where peace has always existed, and go out into the world and find peace. We started uh, doing interviews for our documentary, and we quickly found that if we were to find peace in the world, first we had to find it in ourselves. And that really changed the direction of our filming and our mission. And it seemed like an enormous task, really. You know, some people spend their entire lives looking for that inner peace, never find it. People like uh, Eckhart Tolle spend two years on a park bench and, um, you know, become evolved and um, enlightened. So when I heard that, I thought, well, you know, fat chance for our, our mission. And then it was funny because things started to unfold. When I was in Ethiopia, I got an opportunity to climb up to the top of Kor Kor Mountain and meet a monk who had been living in a cave for almost 50 years and um, also a nun. Different caves, though, of course. <laughs> Um, and then when I was in, uh, first entered Spain, I ended up in Montserrat, uh, which is a monastery, a thousand year old monastery. And I got to live with the monks, uh, for a time, pray with them, eat with them and, uh, spend some time in the uh, gardens, which were amazing. And then ultimately after getting kicked out of there and another hotel, I ended up in a Zen villa up in the mountains overlooking Sitges which is uh, one of the most peaceful places I've been. Um, amazing, amazing place to be during all this. And it was funny because I started to have these moments where I felt inner peace. And they were coming more and more often. And I went out on social media and asked, is anybody else having these flashes of inner peace? And it seemed ridiculous that it could possibly be happening at a time when the world was in turmoil you know, when I was in um, the epicenter for the coronavirus here in Europe. But people came back and said, in fact, you know, they were having these moments. And I asked, you know, what exactly were you feeling when you experienced that? And I started to make a list and I had my items on there and these other people added them. And I didn't want to just say, oh, I've got, you know, for periods of time to the space of peace. Um, I wanted to know why it was happening and then share it so other people could hopefully experience the same thing. So I started composing this list and it has about 15 items on it. Right now I'm going to share maybe just three and depending on everybody's response, if it's useful, then I'll continue and share more. But one of the first things that hit me was that I was in this space of gratitude. I had been traveling for about three months on the road, uh, living out of my suitcases, and for the first time on my trip, I was able to stop completely and take my clothes out of the luggage, put them into a closet and a dresser. And it was just a simple pleasure, you know, to feel like I actually had a place to stay. But it gave me a great sense of satisfaction. And other things, too, that, you know, never before would I ever be thankful for, like the fact that I had toilet paper or that when I opened up the refrigerator there was food in there. Um, it was it was just a matter of being appreciative of everything that was going on in my life. You know, I had a roof over my head. Uh, I had transportation. I had food, like I said. So um, definitely immerse myself in that space of gratitude. And you know, every day that I was around, every breath, I was feeling this sense of satisfaction that you know the coronavirus hadn't gotten me yet, and I was still around. Um, and feeling you know more and more safe each day, which brings me to my second point, um, letting go of the fear. Certainly everybody's had a um, sensation of fear at different times during the epidemic, but after a time, I think you come to realize, well, what I was afraid of didn't really happen. You know, maybe in fact, these things that we're fearing aren't um, realistic or they're not gonna happen to us. And because we're in the moment, you know, we're seeing that we're fine. Um, there are no gangs of people, you know, overtaking 
the cities. Um, there's not war. There's not, um, you know, uh, people taking over our houses. There's no shortages of food, at least here in Spain where I am right now. So um, I think eventually, you know, we got clearer on uh, what fear we actually had. For me, I was concerned about exposure and you know, I started taking steps to minimize that. So instead of going to the store every day, I do one big load once a week at a time when the store was empty, basically when they first opened. And I felt like I had sort of mitigated that risk and isolated what I was actually concerned about as compared to everybody else. And then the final thing I'm going to suggest here was something I heard somebody else say, and it took me a few days to sort of digest it, but what it was was letting go of ambition. And for most of us, you know, we're very goal-oriented. We spend our lives uh, going through school, training, career, you know, trying to be the best we can, get ahead, make money. And during the coronavirus epidemic, I think I've sort of let go of an awful lot of that. I'm just uh, content doing my writing, these video blogs, working on the documentary. And it doesn't feel like the, the pace that I had before. The, you know, I'm not so focused on um, the goals. The ambition is taking a back seat. And I heard somebody say that you have to let go of ambition to get to that place of being. So, I don't know, these things combined with the other 12, I think, have created these opportunities to feel inner peace and it doesn't last forever. You know, when I talked to the monk, uh, the monk at, at uh, Montserrat, he said that it was a, a thing that was temporary. So we sort of go in and out of it, but I'd be interested to hear if anyone else has some thoughts on this. Uh, if you find it of value, um, certainly um, everybody's having a different experience and we want to allow them the dignity of their process. So let me know everybody. I hope everybody's doing well and look forward to chatting with you soon. Bye-bye.